I admit that this is my first time in Sherbrooke, Quebec, or as my billets told me, Lennoxville, Quebec. <laughs> Therefore, I would like to begin with acknowledging that we are on the unceded and ancestral territory of the Abenaki people and within the Wabanaki Confederacy. I would also like to recognize that this is a very special month for all of us, it being February and African Heritage Month. You see, in my life, every day is a celebration of my African heritage, but I find that this month is useful in starting difficult conversations and providing people with context about black culture and how it affects us in our day-to-day -day life and how it has impacted our society at large. It is a mechanism that has been used to recognize wrongs that have happened historically. Now, to the reason I'm here before you today is actually as a result of a very difficult conversation that I had with my father about three years ago now. I asked him to come meet me at the dining room table because I had an announcement. We sat together in silence for a moment before I took a deep breath and said, Dad, I have decided to go to St. FX University. He looked at me steadily and said, if that is your decision. Now I was not as confident as I had been just a moment before, but it was an important moment in the relationship between my parents and I because they honored and respected the decision that I had made for myself. See, I had grown up since the age of eight years old in the northeast part of Calgary. And for those of you who might be unfamiliar with this part of the city and with the city in general, it is a very diverse and immigrant-heavy part of the city. I grew up in a community where my family was very well known. We were very close-knit and happy and loud and very Ethiopian. It was an expectation for all of the young people to attend university, but within the uh, purview of our family's eyesight. So for me to want to go to school outside of the city, if not unheard of, was very rare. You see, I'd grown up in a place where I had always been known in relation to another person. I was the daughter of, or the cousin of, or the niece of, or the granddaughter of, or the sister of, and so on and so forth. So for me, um, moving and leaving the community I had grown up in was an opportunity for me to finally make a name for myself. After all, the same narrative gets boring time and time again, and by my 12th grade year, I was ready to change this story. So I packed my bags, and I made my way to the glorious place of Antigonish, Nova Scotia. <laughs> I think it's really funny. It's a rather a paradox that uh, I would go to a small town in the middle of nowhere to escape when ordinarily the protagonist moves to the big city to escape. <laughs> it was everything that I wanted in that it was very different than where I had grown up. Uh, no one knew my family, no one knew me. There was not any type of association that was weighed with my name or my last name. And very quickly, when I came onto campus, I noticed something very different at St. FX in Antigonish in comparison to where I'd grown up. There was a lot of white people. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong, I grew up in a big city. Uh, I, let me reassure you, I have seen white people before. <laughs> Um, but it was at a very different level that I found myself surrounded um, in Antigonish. Actually, that first day, I started to play a game with myself. Find the person of color. One right there, and one right there, and one right there. And I remember thinking to myself, Rebecca, this is a place where you will work hard. It is a place that you will be successful, but it will never be a place that represents you. In the first several months of St. FX, I really did enjoy myself, but it appeared to me that there was a moment each day that let me know that I did not quite belong with the rest of my peers. 
It came in the form of the young people, uh, the young women on my floor asking me about my hair to see if they could touch it because they'd never seen hair done in braids like this before. It came in the form of walking into the Union drugstore and looking for a foundation but not being able to find one that matched my skin. It was being surrounded by McDonald's and McPherson's and McNeil's and McIsaac's and instead having the last name Masai. It was walking into a classroom and being one of two black kids in a cohort of 50 and then watching my classmates surprise as I answered the questions of the professor with ease. It was three weeks into my time at St. FX hearing the N-word yelled at me from a residence window, a first for myself. All of these things told me, this accumulation let me know that there was a change needed at St. FX. It was a change that would not be quick or convenient, but instead be painful and gradual and systemic. It was a type of change that would take place over the course of decades after the agitation of generations of people, all with the same objective in mind. My first step was to find a group of like-minded individuals. They also understood that St. FX suffered from systemic racism, but I would like to point out that St. FX is not the only university that suffers from this affliction. I would argue that all post-secondary institutions within Canada suffer from this as a result of being built on a colonial framework that uses systems of privilege and oppression to its advantage. It is for this reason that I make a territorial acknowledgement and that I recognize that we are an African Heritage Month because these are the mechanisms that have been provided to us in order to decolonize the history that has been given to us thus far and to recognize communities that have been historically marginalized. Coming back to the group of like-minded individuals, these people were very diverse, and they ended up becoming my foundation. They were composed of professors and activists and teachers from the local elementary school. They were women and gender studies students, and they were youth from the local African Nova Scotian and Mi'kmaq communities. These individuals gave me the tools to learn more about the environment and the context in which I found myself. They are the ones that taught me that Antigonish was a town that was historically segregated. They are the ones that told me that the current location of one of our residences, Governor's Hall, used to be the site of an African Nova Scotian community that had been displaced. Armed with this knowledge, I made my way into my second semester at St. FX, and this brought its own challenges and its own opportunities. One such opportunity came from the alumni house at my university. There was a call out to all students for something called the Alumni Recognition Award, and it was an essay with the topic of how your St. FX experience has impacted you. And part of the prize was for the um, essay winners, you would be able to recite your essay in front of a group of alumni at the university for the following year, um, meaning in homecoming. So I thought of the amount of money that was going to be uh, given to the winner of this prize, and I thought that this could really help me with my tuition. So I sat before my computer for a number of hours trying to write this essay out. And I remember mentally stuttering um, over what I wanted to talk about, which is rare for me. And ultimately, um, I named my essay The Reason, The Flaw, and The Impact of St. FX. I decided to be true to myself, and instead of trying to um, avoid addressing the elephant in the room, I wrote about what I really wanted to write about, and that was how systemic racism had a profound impact on the students at St. FX University. Now, I did not think for one minute that anybody was going to choose my essay, but I thought, at the very least, there will be someone who can see my words and understand that this is an issue. Someone at a higher level who has the opportunity to make a change beyond the capacity that I currently hold. 
You can imagine my surprise when two weeks later I received an email from the alumni house with the words, congratulations, in the heading. I almost fell out of my chair. I thought to myself, they didn't even read the essay. There is no way they chose an essay that talked about systemic racism from a gr black girl who had lived it at their campus. But they had. Then my next challenge was that I was supposed to read this essay in front of the alumni of the university. I remember waking up that day and I was so nervous, but I didn't like the fact that I was anxious about this, so I thought, you know what, if I go out, I'm going to go out with a bang. I had my hair in a huge afro and I had on a bright orange dress. Um, it was treaty day, but the orange was also to recognize um, residential school survivors. So I walked onto that podium and I recited my essay in front of this big group of people who really loved their university. As soon as I said the words discrimination and systemic racism, the room went quiet. I started to anticipate the rotten tomatoes that were going to be thrown at me. But instead, when I looked out into the crowd after having spoken my last word in the essay, they were on their feet and they were clapping. And I was shocked, I was, I was blown away by the reaction. It was not one that I anticipated or ever could have hoped for. And after the fact, I had a number of alumni come to me, shake my hand and said, it was very brave of you to say what you did. And we would really like to talk to you about ways in which we can improve our school. This essay created a ripple effect that I could never have anticipated. It created different opportunities for me, especially in that it brought me into the primary dialogue at St. FX as pertaining to equity. So this brings me to my second step, and that is to speak your truth, regardless of whether there are consequences or even if you are afraid. There is nothing more important than that. So here I was in my second year um, at St. FX, I had a good support system behind me, um, and a part of this support system, I joined a group called SACRUM. Uh, it was an advocacy group which stood for um, Student Advocacy Committee for Equity for Racial Minorities, and together we approached our student representative council and advocated for the inclusion of two new representative positions. One, an Aboriginal student representative, and the other, a students of African descent representative. And we were successful in our endeavor. And then we also created the Academic Success for All program for student athletes, catering specifically to our football and our basketball teams, so that these students would be treated foremost as academics and they would not fall through the cracks within our university institutions. This was the type of advocacy that I was most comfortable with. It was grassroots and firsthand. After a time, I was looking for different opportunities. And I surprised myself. I decided to join the Students' Union. And, and this was significant for me because I had previously seen this as a body that um, could not represent me and could never represent me. But I made a realization in that moment. It was first that the Students' Union was the most powerful body on campus to advocate to the university with. And secondly, I understood the importance of offering my own perspective to the Students' Union in that it would also offer a voice for a group of students that had been uh, historically marginalized by the university. So I took this leap, and I was very proud of the work that I was able to accomplish. So at this point, I had uh, worked seven months as an executive within the Students' Union, and the nomination for president was looming on the horizon. And the support system that I mentioned to you previously, they were now pushing me to put my bid in for president. And I had advisors and professors and colleagues and fellow students all pushing me to put my hat in for the race. But I hesitated. 
I hesitated because I still subconsciously had this understanding of the type of person that could be a president at St. FX. I didn't really believe that I quite fit the picture of that image as was held widely. But I made that realization. Because if I couldn't see myself in that position, then it means that there must be a plethora of people who also could not see themselves represented. So I realized that this could be an opportunity. It could be a chance to finally disrupt this image that people had of those who could be engaged and involved in the highest levels of student advocacy at our university. This brings me to my third step. It is important when advocating for change to have the courage to be the person who takes that first step. On Thursday, January 25th, 2018, a young black woman from the northeast of Calgary became the next Students' Union president at St. FX. This, for many people, had been a first step that had been 53 years in the making. So then I looked at everything I had learned. St. FX had taught me a number of very important lessons as pertaining to making change happen. First is that it requires work, and it requires hard work. It requires patience. And perhaps most importantly, it requires a recognition of a situation and saying that this, this isn't right. Calling out injustice is never an easy thing, but it is imperative when advocating for change. It is through the process of combining everyone's efforts that we are able to be successful and that means each of you, even if you do not think that the issue pertains to you directly, it is so important that you are making your voice heard. We have the privilege to voice our opinions on a day-to-day -day basis. We're not afraid to. We can offer our opinions without any type of repercussion. But that is not, the truth for each, that is not true for each person in our society. Therefore, I would argue that it is our responsibility to speak on behalf of those who do not have the chance to do so. Marianne Williamson said, and as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give permission for others to do the same. As we liberate ourselves from our own fears, we automatically, through our presence, liberate others. Believe me when I tell you that this is true. Thank you. <laughs>